<coughs> Hello, and uh, thanks to this great conference. I think we're really on to something new here. Um, so, um, seven transactions per second, or is it three? Um, that's what we here we can do with Bitcoin. So, what if you need 100,000 transactions per second? So, okay. So, so I'm going to talk about uh, our approach to scaling the use of Bitcoin for microtransactions. My name is Joel Franson, and I come from StrawPay. And uh, we've been looking into Bitcoin for a long time. And uh, when we learned about scripting and the power of contracts, like payment channels, we thought uh, maybe it's time to do microtransactions right. And to give a little perspective on scale, let's say a billion people makes 25 small transactions a day. Uh, that's maybe a, a fifth of your average page views people do today on the internet. So these are really small amounts, so a, a user would only spend a few dollars a day on this. So my point is, this is actually a lot of transactions. On average, it's about 300,000 transactions per second. So we, we uh, had uh, three design requirements when we uh, started on this. So the first one, and maybe most important, is to focus on the user. And uh, may maybe the Bitcoin community hasn't always done that, so we kind of started there. And users really need a simple click to buy, and they don't want to wait or log in or register before purchasing. And it's important the system works for mobile devices, which, which are not always online. Second requirement is efficiency. And of course, a scalable system needs a high level of efficiency to work. And also, if you sell things for a few cents, you need a really low transaction cost. The third requirement is it actually has to work in a larger economy. And, uh, Inside the community, we maybe forget that sometimes, but merchants today, they really want to get paid in local currencies. Consumers are fine with using Bitcoin when we ask them, but they don't really want to hold it. So users need a way to easily trade in and out of Bitcoin, and this has been said many times. And maybe they don't even have to know they're using Bitcoin. So um, it seems uh, plain Bitcoin won't work here. And what about using payment channels to connect consumers to a special payment provider? <clears throat> so instead of a special payment provider for microtransactions, we introduce issuers, and they do a similar thing as a payment provider, but they do it over an open protocol uh, to create a liquid market for payments. So maybe we have a little different approach to this in just connecting payment channels together. So we call the protocol Strom, and it's really a middleware layer on top of Bitcoin. And I'd like to do a walkthrough of a transaction, how it works. So in this example, Lisa wants to buy an article from Aftonbladet, which is a Swedish news site. Uh, she clicks on an article, and she's presented with an offer. The wallet presents her with an offer. When she accepts, uh, the wallet connects to her selected issuer uh, using a payment channel and it buys a digital promissory note. So this is a, a time-limited promise by the issuer uh, to pay the amount of the purchase uh, to the owner of the note. Next, the wallet adds some information about the purchase, transfers it to the merchant, merchant validates the payment and delivers the article. And the idea is that this whole process takes less than a second. Um, and it's interesting to note, uh, in, this, in this, this time, the consumer is out of the transaction. So the consumer has no liability to anyone. And this is sort of, we focus on the consumer experience. We wanted to this, this to get you know, over and very easily, to support a really good user experience. Later, maybe at the end of the day, uh, all, the, all the payments, the aggregated uh, promissory notes, are 
redeemed at the issuer, uh, the issuer pays the merchant uh, the total sum minus some fee. So the point here was to make, is, make this an open protocol so anyone can participate. So as another example, some, someone like Wells Fargo could issue notes denominated in Bitcoin to facilitate these microtransactions for their customers. Uh, now merchants have to uh, accept and redeem uh, these notes from different issuers. So we see there is need for a redeemer role that will buy all the notes from merchants and then redeem them with different issuers. So for, for the long term, we, we envision kind of a network where a lot of actors compete in an open market. So Strom is a middleware then for microtransactions. The focus is really on the consumer merchant, the interaction between the consumer and the merchant. And it uses digital forms of the concepts offer, order, payment, and receipt. Uh, and how the payment actually is done is flexible. So today we, we, we pay uh, merchants in Bitcoin, standard Bitcoin transactions, but we could use payment channels if they would redeem frequently. Uh, but then they wouldn't aggregate payments, but then we could redeem them at, as soon as they happen. Or in the future, we, we could use a lightning network or something similar uh, when, when it gets operational. Um, but a lot of merchants will probably want to get paid in fiat currency. Um, that's what we think, but we don't know. So how can we construct a digital note for this kind of application? So it's a set of attributes. Typically, it contains important things like the amount, the issuer, and the validity time. When it's uh, created, it's signed by the issuer to the first owner, which in this case is the consumer, uh, using a digital signature. The consumer makes a payment by transferring it to the merchant, and that's done with a second signature then. So to transfer these notes, you need to create a digital signature, which means you need to uh, control the private key of the owner so basically, these uh, notes shouldn't be easy to steal. It's a sort of similar thing to Bitcoin. You need to keep track of your private keys. Uh, the merchant redeems the payments in a similar way. That's a third signature. Um, and uh, at each transfer, it's possible to add and, and uh, authorize some information about the transfer. And we use that to create an atomic transaction of the payment and the order. So because this is a signed thing, we, we say it's an authorized order, and because it's a single signature for both the payment and the order, uh, the payer cannot actually dispute the order. We might actually don't know who is the payer, but we know that the, whoever paid cannot dispute the order. We support aggregation by having a special block transfer mechanism where you can take a potentially very large set of payments and transfer them with a sin single signature. These blocks can then be split and, and uh, transferred to different issuers if we need. Uh, another thing is uh, for double spend verification, we use a quite simple mechanism. So when an issuer finally redeems a note, um, the history of the transfers must match or actually include a list of verifiers that, that's decided at the time of issue. Um, this, this actually gives the protocol some, some nice offline properties. So to transact, the issuers, they have to be online all the time to provide their service. Consumers, they only have to be online when they make payments, and uh, that's good because it works on mobile phones and, and mobile devices. But merchants, they can actually be offline and uh, still receive payments and do validation. And uh, that's important for the transaction aggregation we want to happen at, at the merchant or at the redeemers. But it also lets us uh, more easily support things like point of sale applications or vending machines that, that actually don't have to be online, as long as they're online every, every 10 minutes or every hour or something like that. Um, so these notes are also time limited, and this is mostly to limit the double spend verification resources needed, and it's similar to electronic cash. But uh, it also means that these notes cannot work as money, because they will time out and become worthless. Uh, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm making this a quick overview. So 
Uh, in Strom, payments are actually sold when they're routed. And this implies that some important properties of, of the whole system is not decided by us, but decided by markets. So things like the fee, uh, the, the level of aggregation, uh, the validity time, and also which redeemers or issuers to use, is actually decided by markets. So to, to put it all together, um, the question is, does this scale? Um, and I will skip the details of this, this table of the sig signature operations for the system, but we can see that the issuer spends three signature operations per transaction, and a lot of these are in, are in batches. So we, we actually think that this system can actually scale with current hardware and the best signature algorithms to, to very high levels if, if that's needed. So this was a quick overview. Um, if you want to find out more, read our paper about microtransactions and Strom. Uh, you find it on our web page. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Jarl.